Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to paint a little fairy in her garden with all her friends and flowers. I'm Diane and I'd like to welcome you to my watercolour painting course where we paint together every day on fun and helpful projects to guide you on your watercolour journey. Just subscribe and turn on notifications to make sure you get every lesson as they go up on YouTube and you'll soon be making tremendous progress. So let's dive in. So here's my uh, practice sketch that I did earlier this morning. A pretty little fairy sitting on a mushroom or a toadstool in the middle of a bluebell um, copse, let's say. She's got dragonflies all around her. She's got a ladybug or ladybird for companion. She's playing a gold flute and she has a frog sitting at the bottom of the um, toadstool or frog stool. Uh, listening to what she's playing. So there we are. That's going to be our subject today. And I hope you like that idea. Um, we've got fairies at the bottom of our garden here making all the vegetables grow. There must be somebody doing it because I'm not. Um, okay, so my materials today are going to be the following six colours. We've got cobalt blue, anacridone gold, uh, sap green, potter's pink, um, turquoise, blue and um, this one which is quinacridone purple. Uh, may or may not use all of them, not quite sure yet. And I'm going to also use some metallic silver iridescent medium to give the whole thing a kind of ethereal air. So that's something that we're going to be talking about and using as we go on. Um, I'm going to be using mostly my number seven round nylon brush. I've also got my number 11 handy just in case, a palette for mixing my colours on and uh, for when I do the sketch I've got my pencil obviously which is an HB Stettler I think, something like that, Faber Castell actually, Faber Castell and this is what you need obviously, an eraser, Stettler eraser and a mini dry cleaning pad non-abrasive version which is this. If you don't know what that is, I'll be talking about that later. So I'll be back in a minute when I have transferred this sketch onto my piece of stretched watercolour paper. So don't go away. So I've done the sketch and that's finished now. So what I'm going to do next, the next stage in my work uh, process, is to trace that for you and then we'll upload that onto the website and you'll be able to pop on there, make yourself an account, and for free you can download the most recent traceables. And now I'm going to uh, ink that in for you because I'm going to be doing this in uh, a very light pen, um, pen and ink drawing first of all, and then we're going to come in afterwards and um, add the colour. So I'll start with the, the fairy in the middle here and we'll start by just sketching in the outline of her head and her hair and uh, her face which of course she has a very pointed little chin and very delicate features so we won't do much in the way of her features at this stage but we'll just indicate the shape of her body and uh, just going over my pencil marks here to draw in the details because some of these um, details would be quite difficult to indicate um, with paint. So we'll just um, we'll just get her basically outlined in pen. So there's her shoulders and her little tunic top here, a little v-neck, and she's playing a little pipe, a flute or something like that. She's obviously just between notes there, and uh, there's her hair. And then she's got her, her lovely petal-shaped wings behind her here where we're going to use some of the iridescent colour later. And then here we have her, 
her little dress, her tunic dress that she's wearing, which goes over her knees. And she's sitting on the dress like that. And then we have her little legs. There we are. And now she is on top of a mushroom. A big, compared to her, huge mushroom, which has a lovely bulging stem like that down there. And then we have here a ladybug. Sitting there, watching her play. Down here we have um, a frog, who is also her audience. He's enjoying her music. Give him a big eye. He has funny feet. There they are. And he will have some spots on his back. Okie dokie. So that's that. And then up here we have our dragonflies. Can't have a summer's day without some dragonflies or mayflies, can we? And we just indicate the wings there, just where they're going to go. Don't want to make those too heavy. There's another one here. A bee. It's very, very hot here today. I was hoping to get this all done this morning before it started to heat up. But, uh, I didn't in the end. And now, any minute now, our shepherd is going to arrive to shear the sheep. So I'm going to have to take a break. But hopefully I should be able to get quite a bit of this done. One blue bell. Two. Three. Four, five, six, and then we draw in the stem of that blue bell, and up here to And then down here we're going to have a few bits of pieces of grass. And there we are, that's the drawing. Now I want to do something uh, a little bit different with this painting. I'm going to use some iridescent medium and you can buy iridescent medium from um, Winsor & Newton, they do it, and I'll put a link in the description below so that you can get yourself some if you want. You can get that from Jackson's, which I recommend, or Amazon, which is also good. Um, and what you do is, with this medium, this uh, iridescent medium, you mix it with any colour and it turns it into a metallic type of colour. So I have done some tests with that here. And um, hopefully you can see this. This is the uh, ordinary paint colour, that's turquoise blue, and when you mix it with the iridescent medium you get 
I'm not sure how well that will show up in the camera, but you get a really beautiful silver blue. This is Potter's Pink, and likewise you get a silvery pink. This is Quinacridone Gold, and when you mix it with the iridescent medium, you get gold, and that is shiny. And as you turn it in the light, you can see how that reflects. So that really works well. This is Cobalt Blue, and with silver, um, with the iridescence, you get basically uh, a lovely silver color. This is um, Windsor Violet or Quinacridone uh, Purple, and with, uh, with the silver medium, you get that. So it's all very exciting, and obviously, as you um, introduce more water and less pigment, you're going to get these paler colours here as well. But they've all got an amazing sheen to them. So if you just buy one bottle of iridescent medium, then you can turn all of the colours in your palette into silver-based um, metallic colours. You don't need to buy a huge set. I've been tossing up the idea of buying a set of iridescents myself and suddenly realised it's not necessary I can make them all as I go along, whatever colour I need. So that's wonderful. Um, so as far as painting this painting goes, I think what I'm going to do is, I'm first of all, I'm not going to make the toadstool iridescent um, and the frog. They're going to be just ordinary colours and the leaves on the bluebells. And the bees as well will just be um, quinacridone gold and black. And the ladybird will be red and black. Um, but everything else I'm going to try adding a tiny bit of iridescent medium into, especially the wings of the fairy and the wings of the dragonfly. And we'll see how that works out. So um, first of all, I need to find my sketch with my colour plan on it which is here and I was thinking okay so the um, the top of the mushroom I was thinking I would paint in Potter's pink This is a nice granulating colour. As you put it on the paper, you see how it um, comes up with sort of bumps and bits and pieces as it falls into the um, texture on the paper. If you're painting on hot press, this isn't. This is a, a light um, cold press paper. And so the, the um, what do you call it, the, um, the pigment, which is very fine grains of colour, fall into the, uh, um, what do you call it, the indentations on the paper, and, and there it appears darker. And um, then the underneath, I'm going to use uh, raw umber for the underside of the mushroom. And then I'm going to take that down like that and maybe put a little bit of pink in the side there and at the back edge. And won't fiddle with that, just let that run. And then my little froggy frog, he's going to be green. Mais oui, bien sûr, monsieur le grand oui. And I think we'll put, shall we put a little bit of uh, quinacridone gold on his back? Let that run. And then um, the bees. So we'll, these are very tiny, aren't they? So uh, black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black, 
yellow. Okay, and we have to let that dry. Um, and now I'm going to do the um, the leaves, a little bit of grass here, and then because we're not going to do these iridescent, we just do some some leaves. Uh, grass. Well, yes, leaves and grass. something for the frog to sit on. I'll put some green on top of there, but that's not dry yet, so I won't do that. Um, and then the stem for the blue bell, which make that quite a nice cheerful green. And then this one, not forgetting the little bits where the, the bells hang down if I've drawn them in, that one, for example. Okay, and then the, uh, the bluebells themselves, combination of turquoise, blue, and um, quinacridone purple. Quite a pretty blue that. Much nicer than just the turquoise on its own. Thinking about redecorating my kitchen and thinking I paint it blue, and that's the kind of blue I was thinking. But I'm always a bit wary about putting a colour in in a room like the kitchen. At the moment it's kind of sage green, which is easy on the eye but starting to get a bit tired looking needs redoing so there we are that's that and so we need to then grab some black for the B just like that there we are oh and while I've got the black We'll just do the froggy wogs uh, froggy's eye. That'll do. And maybe we'll put some body, just a bit of body for the dragonfly, but not too much because I think he should be mainly a colour. And now the last thing that's on this section of the painting. The red for the ladybird. Okay, that's the first stage. Now, the next thing, I'm going to not use my decent brush for this because the um, problem is with uh, something like a medium like this, probably going to have an issue with the brush never coming clean again properly and it damaging things. So I think it would be quite nice to paint, I think I'll paint the body of this one blue. And then I'm going to mix the blue with some, some silver paint and then I'm going to hopefully, hopefully this will work. see how that dries out. 
Okay, this has had a few minutes to dry now, and uh, I'll just show you how the iridescence on the wings has come out. So that's quite nice. It's quite shiny and metallic looking. And uh, later when it's dry, I'm going to put a little bit more iridescence on the body there. Um, so now I'm going to carry on with the rest of the painting. I uh, got interrupted slightly yesterday because uh, a shepherd came to do the sheep, to shear the sheep. And um, so by the time he'd done, it was too late to do anything else. So, so that was the end of that day. Now this one I think I'm going to do in a very pale, um, very pale violet, iridescent. So just mixing a little bit of mauve into into the iridescent medium there. Another way you can do this is you can actually um, paint the uh, subject in the colour that you require first and then drop the medium in on top or not so much. Paint, um, what I mean is paint it over, paint it over the top once it's dry. There we are, so there's the violet ones. And um, put the lid back on that in case I knock it over. So I'm doing a combination of iridescence on things like the wings of the dragonfly and uh, for the wings of the bird, sorry, the, um, oh God, where are my words? You can, I need another cup of coffee, Diane. For the wings of the bees, I'm just going to use ordinary watercolor, just lightly brushed in like that. Okay, and I'm going to give the fairy her tunic dress now. So I'm just going to paint that in using turquoise. I'm going to go over the whole thing, the inside of her skirt as well as the outside, and then I'll drop some um, shadow in there using um, quinacridone purple mixed with the turquoise to give the shade. And we have a little bit of shade around her waist there. Just, just drop that in and maybe tiny bit here too and we'll just let that dry before we do anything else on that front and maybe I'll do her hair she's obviously going to have to be um, blonde so we'll quinacridone gold her fairy locks and her Pipe, flute. Well, and next is her wings. So what colour? I think they've probably got to be um, turquoise as well, I'm thinking. So a little bit of the medium, not that brush. And this one is a bit too small for that, so I need to find another soft. Okay, this is a wash brush. Is that going to be too big? It might be. Um, how about this one? Windsor & Newton Scepter. I think that's probably going to be okay. So I'll take my turquoise. Make sure that's got some liquid in it, take some iridescence, mix that in, and then more water. And then I'm going to test that um, on a piece of paper. It's always good to test it because you're going to find out um, if you've made a mistake. 
I think I want proportionally more silver and less water. Okay, that looks all right, <coughs> I think, I hope. All very new stuff. So we're just going to give her some lovely wings. Just keep the strokes nice and free. There we are. Is that what fairy wings look like? Hope so. So that's those. We're getting there. Thank you very much, Winsor & Newton Scepter Wash Brush Square Flat. Very nice. You can still buy those. This one, this one's losing its coat at the end so <clears throat> time to uh, put some paint on there I suppose okay um, so back to my ordinary number seven round brush and going to just drop in a little bit of quinacridone uh, purple for the body of that dragonfly and that's dry now so if we want to, we can always come in with a little bit more detail near to the body, a bit more shadow if you want. And similarly, we could do the same on the blue one over here. If you feel that's going to improve it. Matter of taste really, <clears throat> how you want to do that. We can do the same for her wings later on. I'm going to use Potter's Pink for her skin. Um, yeah, I think that'll be all right with a little bit of burnt sienna in it. So she's got a little bit of a suntan. I think that will be okay. Let's do her legs. And there's a tiny bit of iridescent medium in there. So she's slightly shiny. There we are. And um, okay, I know I was going to uh, just darken down the inside of the mushroom a little bit. And this side here, put some more shadow, maybe a tiny bit more down here. And perhaps darken the, the edge. A bit. Maybe a little bit here under where she's sitting, perhaps. Um, now, <clears throat> a little detail. The black spots on the butter, um, on the uh, ladybird. and green spots on the frog. There we are. And I think he ought to have a slightly yellow-ish tummy. So that's that. What else? I think we're pretty much there. We could um, darken some of the shadowy areas of the, the fairy's skin. For example, at the underside of her arms. And um, the lower part 
of each leg. And maybe a bit under her under her chin. And then on one side of her face. And when that's dry, we can put in um, her features. Seems to dry very quickly with that medium in. So we can add a little bit of interest to her wings. Was going to do some slightly more iridescence there, wasn't I? I think I'm going to use just my silver pen for that. That could be easier. Just lighten that up a little bit. And over here. And then, um, yeah, I think. Well, we could we could put some more silver on the wings there, but I don't think that's really necessary. Last thing is going to be the spatter element, and I'm quite happy to use um, turquoise for the spatter. So we'll cover her with some tissue paper and. Cover the bluebells with some tissue paper, and then we'll just do a little bit of blue spatter. There we are. I haven't um, finished off her face quite because it's still a little bit damp, but um, there's nothing much needs to be done there really, just a tiny touch. You could play around with it a lot more, you could add a few more details to the bees and, and to the foreground and the background and so on, but that's the basic painting finished now. And if I hold it up, you can see the iridescence on her wings. And hopefully you can see one happy little fairy there sitting on her toaster. So there's the final painting and I hope you enjoyed watching me paint this today and that you learned something. If so, click subscribe and give me a like and come back tomorrow for another painting session. Don't forget to go to the website and download the sketch so that you can have a go at this painting. And please use the affiliate links in the description below if you're buying any new supplies. Thanks again for being with me today and I look forward to the next time. And I'll just say bye-bye for now, everybody. Bye-bye.